building a full stack app can get pretty complex. Usually you'd have to juggle multiple tools for authentication, database and integrations, and then integrate separate services for analytics, deployment, and hosting. But what if all of that was baked into one platform? Today, I'm going to show you how all of that works seamlessly inside Bolt, as we're going to build an AI-powered virtual try-on app using Google's Nano Banana model. Starting from a single prompt, we'll safely integrate our API key, add user authentication and database, deploy and host our application, and finally see the analytics, all in one place with no complex setup or context switching. Let's dive right in. As always, we are starting right here with a blank project and a single prompt. If you saw my previous video, you know that every good project starts with a good prompt. So let's paste in my requirements for our virtual try on app. So here I'm telling Bolt everything it needs to know. Users will upload a photo of themselves, pictures of clothes they want to try on or a description, and the app will generate a new enhanced image for them. I'm also adding a few interface requirements, specific features I want our app to have, and which AI model to use. Most importantly, I'm asking it to use Bolt database to make everything work seamlessly. We'll still use plan mode to check if Bolt understood our request and if it has any questions for us. So for me, that will take a couple of minutes, but for you, in just a few seconds, you'll see the end result. After a couple of minutes, our app is ready and it looks great. We can upload our photo, we can upload clothing items or describe our outfit and the new image will appear over here. So let's try it out. We're going to upload a picture of myself. We're going to upload a picture of a hoodie and we're going to click generate try on. So the thing is that the app actually won't work at the moment, but this is fully expected. If we look at Bolt's message, it proactively told us that we are missing the API key and that we should add it as a secret. Smart. So let's listen to Bolt and secrets will be the first part of Bolt database that we are going to explore. So Bolt is telling us we need to add our API key, but more importantly, it's telling us to add it as a secret. Why? Because you never want to expose API keys in your front end code. Anyone could grab it and potentially rack up charges on your own account. Secrets are Bolt's way of keeping sensitive information locked down. So we're going to paste our Gemini API key. You can notice how it's immediately masked. Even I can see it once it's here. Now the secret is encrypted and stored securely. It will never be accessible to our users. Now let's try our app again. I'm going to upload my image. Upload an image of a hoodie. And we're going to click generate trial. Now our app works perfectly. And in big part, thanks to something called a server function. Here's the thing, Bolt automatically created something called a server function for us, but you don't need to worry about what it is or exactly how it works. The beauty of Bolt is that you just describe what you want to achieve in natural language and Bolt finds the most effective and secure way to get it done. When your request involves API keys or sensitive information, Bolt often creates a server function automatically because it's the best and the safest approach. You don't need to know the technical details, Bolt handles that for you. While our app is generating images, behind the scenes Bolt has already automatically created a database for us. So let's take a look at what it can do. We're going to start with tables now. Depending on your project, you'd have different tables here. For example, a project management app might have tables for tasks, users, projects, and comments. In our case, we have a generations table that stores all the virtual triumphs we've created. Each row is a generation. We've created one image so far, so we have one row, and I can see all the data. The image uploaded, results generated, timestamps, everything. You can then filter records and run queries right here. You want to see all generations from last week? Filter by date. You need to find a specific user's try on, search by user ID. It's perfect for managing your data or pulling reports without writing any additional backend code. The logs tab shows all database activity. If something goes wrong, this is where you'd come to figure out what happened. Of course, you can then ask Bolt how to fix it. Security Audit lets you review your security policies and make sure your data is properly protected. If Bolt finds anything missing, you can ask it to fix it automatically as well directly in here. In the Advanced tab, you can import data from an existing Superbase project 
or you can claim your bold database to Superbase. This gives you a lot of flexibility. Now the beauty here is that we didn't have to set any of this up. Bolt saw we needed to store data and created the database automatically. We just get to use it. Right now, everyone using our app would share the same history of trials. That's not ideal. We need user authentication so each person has their own private experience. I'll tell Bolt, add user authentication with email and password. Users should sign up, log in, and only see their own saved trials. We'll give Bolt a couple of minutes and then we'll see the result. Now that our sign up flow is ready, we're going to create a new user. We're going to create a new generation. So we're going to use the describe mode this time. Click generate try on. We'll give Bolt a few seconds to create our new image. Our generation is ready. You can see it is in history of generations as well. Now I'm going to sign out, sign in as a different user. So you'll see that this image will not be in that other user's history. So now I'm logged in as another user. And when we go to history, you'll see there are no previous try -ons. So everything worked perfectly. And each user has its own private experience inside our application. So now I'm going to create a few more users, uh, a bunch of new image generations. So then you'll see how it all looks in Bolt database. Now, after creating a few more users and generating a couple more try-ons, let's see how it looks in our Bolt database. So we're going to go to database. We're going to go to user management. And here we'll see that I've created 10 users for our application. We'll see their emails, when they were created at, when they're last signed in, and so on. But the really cool things also happened in our database. So when we go to generations table, you'll see we have a few more generations. We can see the mode. We can see the specific prompt that was used. But at the very end of it, we can also check the user ID. So you can see which user created this specific generation. Now, when we go back to user management, we're going to copy ID of our regular user. We're going to go back to database. And let's assume we want to see generations created just by this specific user. We can go to filter. We can filter by user ID. We're going to paste this value. We're going to apply this filter. And here we'll see those two generations that this specific user created. So Santa Claus suit and a DAX suit. When we go back to our app, we're going to check the history. All worked as intended. So Bolt not only generated a complete authentication system, it also automatically updated our database to link generations to specific users, making sure each user can access only their own generations, real all-in-one solution. While all of this is already very impressive, there's actually more. Let's look at the authentication controls Bolt gives you. In the authentication section, you've got several powerful settings to customize how users access your app. First up, the basics. You can control whether new users can sign up. Super useful if you want to close registration after launch or make your app invite only. There's also anonymous sign-in support. Enable this and users can try your app without creating an account first. Great for demos or letting people explore before committing. Under email settings, you've got fine-grained control over security. You can require email confirmation before users can sign in, making sure they own the email address they're using. Secure email change requires confirmation on both the old and new email addresses. Secure password change requires users to be recently logged in before changing their password. And here's a really fun one. Prevent leaked passwords. This automatically rejects passwords that are easy to guess or have been exposed in data breaches. All of these settings are just simple toggles. No complex configuration and no external services to set up. Now, remember that the database, we had something called security audit. Now that we've added user authentication, it actually suggests enabling the leaked password protection. It shows how entire Bolt ecosystem works seamlessly together. Now, you might have noticed that we can also enable Google sign-in, but we need to publish our app first. So I'll show you how to configure this after we do that. But before we publish our app, there's one more feature we should add. As it stands, after users sign up to our application, they can generate as many images as they want, which can get pretty expensive for us quite quickly. So we're going to ask Bolt to allow each user to create up to two image generations. And after they reach the limit, 
it's going to add a paywall. So I'm going to ask Bolt to introduce that, and in a few seconds you'll see how it went. So now our new feature is ready, and for this specific user, I've already created two image generations. When I try to create a third one, I'm immediately hit with a paywall, which is very much the intended behavior. So now we'd be ready to publish our application, but before we do that, I want to show you one more thing in our database. Look at this. Bolt automatically created a new table to track generations per user. It understood that to enforce this limit, it needs to store this information somewhere. And we didn't have to design this or even ask Bolt to do this. Bolt just figured it out and implemented flawlessly on its own. So now we can finally publish our application. To do this, we're going to go to the top right corner, click Publish. Bolt is going to run one more security scan. There are no security issues, so we can safely hit Publish. Now our website is published, so when we go to this link, we're going to see our application online. It's as simple as that. After you deploy your project, you've got a few options around domains. First, you can edit your default Bolt host URL to something more memorable. You can also buy a new domain directly inside Bolt. You need to check if a specific domain is available. And if it is, you can buy it here directly inside Bolt. You can also connect a domain you already own, in which case you can follow the steps outlined over here. And if you ever need to take your project offline, just hit Unpublish. You can always publish it again in the future. Once your application is live, you'll want to know how people are using it. Bolt has built-in analytics and, as you can guess, there's no third-party setup required. Our app just got published, so there's not too many visitors to begin with, so I'll show you how it looks on a landing page that I've deployed about two weeks ago. So here's everything you need. Unique visitors and page views over time with daily, weekly, or monthly views. Top sources shows where your traffic is coming from. Direct visits, social media, referrals. You can see exactly how people are discovering your app. Top locations breaks down your users by country. In this example, most of our traffic is coming from the US, India, and Poland. You've got bandwidth usage to monitor performance and top pages to see which parts of your app are most popular. After our project is published, we can now add Google Sign-in to make it even easier for users to create accounts. The first step to do it is actually ask Bolt to add Google Sign-in authentication. After we do that, we go to the database, the authentication tab, Google Sign-in, and here we can see that after deploying our application, Bolt automatically generated the redirect URLs we'll need. However, to enable Google authentication, we still need to add our Google Client ID and client secret here. To get those, we'll need to set up authentication in the Google Cloud Console. Now, there are a few steps involved, creating a project in Google Cloud, configuring consent, and setting up credentials. It can vary a bit depending on your specific Google workspace, so I'd recommend following Bolt's step-by-step -step guide on this support page. It walks you through everything clearly for a flawless integration, and it usually takes about five to 10 minutes. Once you've got your credentials from Google Cloud, just paste them here. Bolt will handle the rest, storing them securely and wiring up the authentication flow. And there we have it. Starting from a single prompt, we built a full-stack AI-powered virtual try-on app. We secured our API integration with secrets and server functions. We've set up a database that tracks everything automatically added user authentication, deployed to production with a custom domain, and got instant analytics, all without ever leaving Bolt. Now, there's still so much more we could cover, like actually getting that paywall working so you can get paid with Stripe integration, or maybe boosting your SEO to get more users or integrating your app with other external services. Let us know in the comments what you want to see next, and we'll make it happen. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.